I thought today we'd look at how the state tree has changed in UE 5.5. So the 5.5 preview is out and this is just a third person template opened in that version. So the first thing we notice is when we right click to add artificial intelligence, the state tree is enabled by default. So that's one change. We go to the plugins and we put in state tree. So the state tree is ticked there. We do like to, we have in our previous tutorials ticked off the gameplay state tree as well. So I'll turn that on just for our benefit. Close that and we open the, the preferences of the editor and we go to the state tree, there should be a state tree here. state tree editor. So in the options here, so compiler save on compile, I'd like to put that on success. There's an option to auto record and then to reset and an experimental option where if you change the node it will try to copy the properties over to the new node that you're using. So that might be interesting as well. So if we create our first state tree to see how it how it appears in 5.5, we go to state tree. So again, by default, we only get access to this schema camera director, which is no good to us. So let's restart and see what changes it makes. So I've restarted after enabling this gameplay state tree, which is not enabled by default. We go back and now create a state tree. We now get op access to the two that we components that we had in our previous tutorials. So let's do state tree AI component again. State tree, just overview. And if we open that, so at first glance, we can see that visually it looks better, though on the asset details, most of these things are the same. The big difference is that now you can create a task straight from the state tree, a condition straight from the state tree, and have access to the underlying blueprint class that we use. There's also this new, new option called a, new cons a consideration, which is a state tree utility consideration. And this is actually going to be quite useful because it allows you to have a state with multiple options and then the consideration will run some tests and decide which one to execute. So we're going to be start try using that in our future state tree tutorials. The outliner, of course, just gives the outliner and you have access to the statistics. So you can create a state just by clicking on that. And if we look across, so it has a name, it now has a tag that you can associate with it. You can give it a color, which you can set, I think in the, in the theme here. So there are colors, you can set a default color, you can have a, another color, red. This was present in the 5.4 as well, but now it shows up visually. Uh, state tree can have a type, state, group, linked asset, subtree. So I think that's the same. Selection behavior. So this has changed. So before we just had access to some of these, but now we have, we can use this some utility AI as well. So select children with highest utility, select randomly based on utility. So those two are new. Conditions, this is new as well, isn't it? So required event to enter, needs a tag. And now you can attach a payload structure to it as well. So you can create your own structure and that can contain information to decide whether you can enter the state or not. 
check prerequisites when activating directly. This is the utility. So when I think when you use this new consideration, you can give it a weight. And then obviously you can add tasks and transitions. So there are some nice new changes here which will make it more, more useful. Parameters, again, same evaluators we had in the 5.4. Global tasks, so again, there are some new ones here. So the move to is from before. You now have a environment query task which you can use, which wasn't in 5.4. And you also have access to this run parallel tree. So that means that you can just get it to run a parallel tree at the same time as it's running this tree. So that's a new one. The rest are the same. So in our previous tutorial, we created this hide and flee EQS state tree. where the enemy runs away from us, looks to see if he can see us. And all of this was done via, via the state tree. So always running away from us. So I've migrated that entire level and state tree from 5.4 into 5.5. So let's see if it works without making any changes. So if I press play, and again, so he runs away like he did previously. Keeps checking to see if he can see us. And using the state tree and the EQS, he keeps running away so we can never catch him. And it works straight out without making any changes. So that's good. We know that what we learned in 5.4 is applicable and works perfectly fine in 5.5. So if I open the actual state tree that we're using, again, so you can see some changes. So they've moved some of this information underneath here. Otherwise, the tasks work exactly the same. If we go to create a new task, we get access to our tasks that we've created previously. We didn't create any conditions, but we can do that. Our asset details are all valid as well. When we look at the tasks, so our hide and flee task, we can see we've got more access now to, to direct links. So we can browse to the asset, we can edit it, we can just replace it directly here with another task. So these were not there in the previous state tree. We go to the edit, it opens it up for us. So again, that's another quality of life improvement. So we said we were using an EQS template. We created our own EQS. We then learned how to set named parameters. So again, there are videos on both of those that are worth looking at. As I said in this new one, so here, if you go, in terms of creating a task, you can create a, an environment query. So again, you can take the query. We created the hide at location query. And you can have, have it return the single best item or a random item, just as it did in our task itself. There is, we also learned how to bind to EQS queries using the data parameter set named parameter so we can change the values as we needed to. So this comes with a query config and you can bind that to a parameter and even within the tasks you've got access to parameters. So you could click there, look for query config, environment query context, no. Um, So if you don't know what type this query config is in here, if you go to the query config and just go promote parameter, say parameters here, it will give you query config and you can see it's of type AI dynamic parameter type. 
And once you created that, you can then add a parameter type, but you're limited only to floats, which have a value. They can be associated with a Blackboard key, it looks like. However, when I've tried to use it in 5.5, .5, this doesn't seem to bind correctly. So in order for it to work, and until that's been fixed, we would still need to use the set named parameter. In other words, everything that we did with creating the EQS query in our previous tutorial will work just fine. And there will be circumstances where it's better to do it this way than necessarily to use the built-in query function. And in terms of where the result goes, so you can bind the result to a parameter as well. So you could say promote that to a parameter. And we can say it's going to, we're looking for actor locations where to flee to. We'd bind that to a vector. And that would be our result, which would be available here. So the output of the query EQS will bind itself to the result. And then if we created another task, such as here, a move to task, the destination we could then just bind to a parameter result. So we could do what we did in our task using our own just one one task in the state tree using two different tasks but as I said this query config doesn't seem to work in 5.5 .5. if you're using the Mac 5.5 .5 also gives you access to the debugger which wasn't available on Mac before but now is you click on there it opens the debugger window which will record the state tree as it's running. So if on the debugger, if I just press the play, the launch the game, it will launch it and it will record the different states that it's entering into. And then we can click on the debugger, the execution, and maybe follow the logic that our program is, our state tree is taking to run. So this is particularly helpful when you have a more complex tree with multiple states. You can follow each one, open them down, see when they were activated, and so on. So that's a quick look at state tree in 5.5. We've seen that our previous state trees and everything we've learned still works in 5.5 without any changes, but there are some nice new visual changes and some nice new sort of quality of life functional changes. There's also this new state tree consideration blueprint, which we'll start using as well. And We've looked at how some of the changes here are helpful. So you can browse, open, replace, and you can use EQS queries direct as a, as a task without having to create your own. So in the next videos, we're going to start using 5.5 state trees to create some more, a, more state tree based tutorials.